given the time, uh, I'll try and make it uh, a brief introduction um, because clearly Marx's uh, capital in a day is going to be a bit of a, a roller coaster for you all, I think. And uh, probably at the end of the day, you're going to be buzzing and uh, uh, eager to get uh, involved in trying to change society after this. Um, clearly, Marx's capital uh, is a, a milestone, I would say, in uh, Marxism where he was able to analyze and spent many years, you're talking about 17 years prior to the publication of this book where he studied and criticized all the, the main academics and economists of the time in order to clarify the real workings of the system that we, we live under. Um, and as uh, Adam explained, the reason for this was not uh, to have an academic uh, kind of uh, take that take with the intellectuals of the, of the time, but to prepare the, the movement, prepare the working class for them to be more conscious, to understand what tasks were in front of them in changing society. Clearly, uh, the reason why Marxist capital is more relevant today is uh, quite obvious because we're living under the, well, deepest capitalist crisis since the 1930s. And that's uh, tested to, but not just by ourselves, but all the, uh, the bourgeois economists at this particular moment. Uh, in fact, it's the, this must be in a recovery phase. That's the rec worst recovery or the weakest recovery in history. And uh, even they have to term it uh, secular stagnation. Uh, in other words, that the system itself, uh, capitalism, has uh, entered an impasse which Marx himself predicted. Of course, uh, we have to understand the, 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 uh, the broad outlines. And uh, clearly, it resonates with uh, a lot of people, uh, particularly young people, caught up in this capitalist crisis. Because at the end of the day, it affects everybody. An epoch now of austerity has been introduced, arising from the crisis itself. All the reforms that we took for granted in the past are now under attack. Capitalism can no longer afford the reforms of the past and therefore this is a new normality in attempting to reduce the living standards in order to uh, save the capitalist system. Of course uh, this onslaught is changing people's conceptions and perceptions. Um, without exception uh, all countries are affected. It shows the global nature of capitalism on the one hand, but also it's the working class who suffer. I mean, in Britain also, uh, we got the new uh, facts and figures that uh, it's been the biggest decline in living standards, <coughs> sorry, over the last 10 years, a cut in real wages for 150 years. I mean, that's the time when, when Marx was actually writing capital. That's the kind of span you're talking about. And it is this uh, brutal change in the nature of capitalism of an attack, of reduction in real wages, of working conditions, and general standards of life going down, that obviously causes people to think more about the situation they're in and the system that operates at the present time. Of course, uh, the newspapers and the television and so on, the education services and universities will say this is the best, nevertheless, despite these little problems, it is the best system that you could ever hope for. Well, they would say that, uh, obviously. But Marx himself explained, well, no, hang on, hang on a minute. Uh, what we have here is a social system, which is not eternal, and like other social systems, has a life itself, has a maturity, and has a decline and fall. And Marx uh, was able to, if you like, unlike the other economists of his own age, who believed in the permanency of capitalism, he saw it merely as a stage in the development of society itself with its own particular laws, which we have to have a look at, and how these laws are very contradictory and inherent in the capitalist system is uh, uh, inherent crises because of these particular contradictions, which we will also go into in, uh, in a minute. But of course, um, uh, it affects uh, young people in particular. I was at the the TUC on, on, on Monday of this week and I uh, attended a fringe meeting where a young girl was, was speaking. Uh, her name was Georgina 
and she was a, a McDonald's striker, young, young, young girl, and um, it's the first time she'd ever spoke in a meeting, and she was uh, shaking and very emotional, and uh, explained to us the real working conditions that she had to put up with and her, and her, her workmates uh, in this well-known institution, McDonald's, with a very smiley face and a, a clown image and so on and so forth, cheery image for young people. But tear away the real face and behind it, you see a, a brutal uh, employer who carries out uh, quite the, uh, uh, um, how can I say, intimidatory actions against its workforce. And she explained uh, from her own personal experience how she felt uh, degraded, how we felt like treated like animals by the employers and her managers of, of the pressure, of the harassment, and even the abuse that they would take. Taken into a corner and abused, reduced to tears. And this uh, uh, pro provoked this feeling of, of rage amongst themselves. And for the first time in, in the history of this, this uh, company, they had a strike. And she said it was the the most liberating thing I've ever I've done. She's the best thing I've done in my life. Uh, she just joked that uh, she was enjoying it, as it were, quoting the, uh, the famous uh, uh, phrase. And, uh, but she, she realized how other workers were, be, were, were faced. It's not just her, it's across the board that young workers are feeling the, the, the backlash, if you like, of capitalist crisis itself. And it was for these people, working people, as Adam explained, that. Marx wrote these works to explain to them the nature of capitalism, how it works, why they will never emerge any further than being workers, why in society there will be enormous polarization amongst the classes, and it will give rise to a, a struggle within society over the product produced by the working class, by the surplus value created by workers, which is the class struggle itself. Of course, we know that uh, uh, Marx has been derided, uh, uh, although even today I would say some economists are keen to uh, give a little bit of a compliment to Marx. You know, well, he was right on, on certain things, like, like the crisis maybe, but don't get carried away. Other things he was very, very wrong on, like trying to change society. But nevertheless, um, uh, one of his main theories, or rather what he was supposed to have said, anyway, was this theory of, of increasing misery and how uh, people laughed at it and the, the establishment laughed at it. Uh, how ridiculous. Living standards are going up, they said. We're all becoming middle class, they said. And uh, therefore Marxism was out of date, was uh, historical non-entity. And yet we see graphically today how these uh, tendencies have come to the fore of enormous polarization in society, particularly in relation to the terms of wealth, where I think even uh, Oxfam said there were 66 individuals in the world who have more wealth than the half of humanity combined together. Gives you an idea of the extreme nature of this polarization, where Marx explained that one pole you would have extreme wealth, and the other pole you would have increasing misery, and poverty and squalor and degradation. And that's increasingly the picture that we have even in the advanced industrial countries, let alone the more un undeveloped uh, countries where there's brutal exploitation in a quite a naked form. But this is taking place today in Britain and elsewhere in the 21st uh, century. And of course our task is to understand why why is it this is taking place in order to, if we're going to change things, we have to understand why it happens in the first place. And though it is true, I would say that uh, uh, capital is not uh, an easy read. Having tried when I started, I, it was a very difficult book. Mainly because uh, not so much the ideas were difficult, but they were new ideas. They were very uh, uh, strange ideas. Having... Um, uh, learned in school about uh, economics. This, this book was totally different from what I was ta ta taught about. It was a new angle, a new, a, a different direction. But once you begin to understand the fundamental ideas, which are not very difficult really to grasp, everything tends to fall into place. Above all, this, this idea that labor, uh, that, the, the, that the labor of the working class is the 
creates the wealth of society, creates the value of society. And this, this idea, this labour theory of value, was held 200 years ago, even by the classical bourgeois economists. They understood that. Look, what is the value of a thing? Well, surely it's the amount of labour employed in producing it. It's quite a, quite a concrete thing. And you can measure it. It's quite understandable. It's quite a simple idea. The only thing is it was a very, um, how can I say, subversive idea. And as capitalism developed, they dropped this, this conception altogether because obviously um, they didn't want the working class to have the full fruits of their labour because that would undermine profits and their justification for existence. And therefore, this, this subversive idea uh, of a labour theory of value, which we will go into today, clearly had to be ditched and another form of understanding had to be brought on board. A subjective view of uh, wealth, a subjective view of value, um, the ma uh, of marginal utility and other such uh, uh, misunderstanded terms, um, which uh, clouded the issue, which was the purpose of it in, in reality. Uh, and Marxism attempts to clarify, bring out the, the real relationships in society and where things are moving to, the laws of capitalism. The idea of monopolies being created from, from, from competition, of huge multinational corporations being formed on, on, because of the development of capitalism itself, of a growing working class in society. And now that's the case internationally. And Marx obviously pointed to the fact, as a, as a revolutionary, not just an economist, but a revolutionary who wanted to change the world, that only on the basis of uh, the working class becoming conscious of its um, position um, and the need to change society would that revolution unfold. It was events that would change things. That, that experience that workers had would, would force them, not because they wanted to, to, to move towards change in society. To create a revolution, to do away with capitalism and create a, a planned democratic society where the resources were used for the benefit of all. And that would uh, uh, eliminate the problems created by capitalism, whether it be mass unemployment, homelessness, poverty, squalor. After all, we have the resources to uh, resolve these problems, but we cannot do it on a capitalist basis because of the, of the laws and power of capitalism held by the capitalist class itself. And therefore, this, these ideas in capital to understand the, the, the basic laws of the system was a means of educating the advanced layers of the working class. And I think capital was called the Bible of the working class uh, in the 19th century in these big labor movements that took place in, in uh, Europe, which uh, did fundamentally to the ideas of Marxism in the Second International. These ideas then were the basis of trying to change society. Even the British Labour Party in 1918, adopted a constitution uh, to overthrow capitalism and bring about a socialist society, mainly under the impact of the Russian Revolution. But that, uh, that was the, the, the conclusions drawn even by the Labour Party at that stage, that capitalism could not solve the problems. In fact, it was the problem and had to be eliminated. And therefore, it's the experience of workers in struggle, the experience of workers, the life of workers, which pushes them in the direction of the need to change society itself, to form trade unions, political parties, and so on. And they, this is all linked, really, to these ideas, which are not abstract, but very concrete for working people. Uh, what Marx is describing is the day-to-day -day lives of people. And particularly, when you read uh, probably the easiest chapter on the working day in Capital, you can see a lot of parallels with today, of the introduction of zero-hour contracts, of short-term uh, contracts, of flexibility of labour, and all those things intended to squeeze as much unpaid labour out of the working class as possible in order to increase the profits of big business, of the capitalist. And all of it is related to really these ideas, these fundamental ideas. So I hope that uh, you know, this day will be fruitful for you. Uh, certainly it's a great opportunity. I've never been to a uh, a day uh, school on, on the whole of capital, I must admit, in my life. And uh, I'm sure that that will be a, 
are of great value, particularly for younger comrades and uh, young people who are beginning to, to, to reach out for these ideas, to find out what they really mean and the implications that is drawn from them. Uh, Marx himself said, uh, you know, I, I hope I don't die before completing capital, even in a manuscript form, he said. Uh, and the reason for that, he had dedicated his life to this. Um, not only volume one, but the other volumes that went after it as well. Because in that, he said, this is the, the still essence, really, of, um, of an understanding of which way forward for working people. Um, and Marxism, above all, is uh, not a mystical thing. It's, it's quite a, you can grasp it quite easily insofar as it can be defined as uh, the generalized experience of working people. I mean, it's the best of, uh, of culture at the time. There's no doubt about that. It's, there are three components of Marxism, uh, not only of, of uh, philosophy, of, of a method of understanding, uh, but also of history and of economics, if you like. These three component parts which give an understanding of not just the, the, the situation in capitalism, but the whole of history itself. It allows us to see our, our role, if you like, our, our part in the development of history itself. And history is not a jumbled uh, uh, co concoction of, of, of accidental features, but, uh, but is part of, of, a, of a lawful development of society itself. The only thing is, people make history. It's not an automatic process. Uh, it's a conscious, it has to be conscious in the minds of people of what they're going to, trying to accomplish. And that is why the importance of, of understanding is, is vital. Uh, and that's where theory comes in, that's where ideas come into, in, into being. Because without those valuable ideas, and the reason why we learn about them, is that we do not want to re repeat the mistakes of the past, and the tragedies of the past, those who do not learn from history will be doomed to repeat it. And that's why we have to learn now in order that we can, yes, carry through a successful change of society, eliminating the contradictions and developing a, a, a fruitful society based on the needs of the mass of, of the population itself. So I hope you will enjoy this day and it will inspire you uh, to become um, active and to find out more about these ideas and yes, help change society for the benefit of humanity. Thank you.